Office for the City of Troy open for August 2014. And I know that we have one absent member here tonight. We'll address that in a minute. But the first order of business uh, will be the roll call. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to uh, actually ask our Vice Chairman Bruce Bloomingdale to read for the public's um, interest uh, our procedures here for this board for your participation or your review. And so if Mr. Bloomingdale could uh, read these, this information for your um, interest. Good evening. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals is a group of seven of your neighbors or peers appointed by City Council to pass judgment on requests for variances and other matters that are brought before them. A variance is a relaxation of the literal provisions of the zoning ordinance. Petitioners must indicate a hardship or practical difficulty running with the land that would warrant the granting of the variance. The board will hear the items in the order that they appear on the agenda. When an item is called, the chairman will verify that the petitioner is present. Then the city administration will summarize the facts of the case. The petitioner will then be given an opportunity to address the board to explain the justification for the action requested. After the petitioner makes their uh, presentation and answers any questions that the board may have, the chairman will open the public hearing. Any person wishing to speak on the request should raise their hand and when recognized by the chairman, come up to the podium. The speaker should identify themselves with name and address, indicate their relationship to the property in question. For example, they live next door, the behind the property and so forth. Then state whether they are in favor of or against the variance request and give the reasons for their opinions. Comments must be directed through the chairman. Comments should be kept as brief as possible and closely pertain to the matter under consideration. Only one person will be recognized by the chairman to speak at one time. At the conclusion of public comments, the chairman will close the public hearing. Once the public hearing is closed, no other public comment will be taken unless in response to a specific question by a member of the board. The board will then make a motion to approve, deny, or table the request in order for the request to pass a minimum of four votes for approval are needed. If the request is not granted, the applicant has the right to appeal the board's decision to Oakland County Circuit Court. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. So at this point in time, I'll just introduce everyone uh, at the table and the staff that support the work of the board here. And I'll start with the board. So to my far left, your right is Mr. Lambert, who are, is a member of the board. And then to his right is Mr. Eisenbacher, another member, and this is Mr. Krent, who is a, um, a member of the Planning Commission, but also serves on this board. So he's our liaison to that particular board. Uh, I'm Glenn Clark, I'm the chairman of, of, this, uh, of this board. To my right is Mr. Bloomingdale, the vice chairman. To his right is Mr. Courtney, the longest mem serving member of this uh, body. And over here to the side is Mr. Evans, who is our liaison to the city administration. And then to his right is Ms. Dufresne, who is an assistant city attorney who provide, helps provide legal advice to uh, the board um, in front of you, which are citizens here in Troy. And at this time, I believe we are prepared, Mr. Evans, for the roll call so we can announce that we have quorum for this meeting. Mr. Bloomingdale. Here. Mr. Clark. Here. Mr. Courtney. Here. Mr. Eisenbacher. Here. Mr. Neal. Mr. Krent. Here. Mr. Lambert. Here. Okay, we do have quorum. One member is uh, absent tonight. Uh, moving forward, we have the minutes as item number two. Are there any questions from board members regarding the minutes of uh, city staff or any other discussion, or is there a motion to be made? Mr. Courtney. I'll move the minutes, but with one change. The uh, one resolution, the moved and supported are reversed. Of the maker yeah, of the I motion? Did, I did not move it. I supported it, and Mr. Eisenbacher... Can you declare which uh, motion that is? Uh, offhand. Was, it, was that the first case or the second case? There were two cases. I think it's the first case, isn't it? It would be the f A. Ah, let me see. A, 4A. Okay. Is there a second to Mr. Courtney's motion? 
I will second Mr. that. Mr. Eisenbacher, thank you. Uh, any discussion on that? Mr. Courtney, do you just want to briefly mention that again on the record? Okay. Under discussion? Uh, to uh, <laughs> approve the minutes with the correction uh, that item 4A was uh, moved by Eisenbacher, supported by Courtney. Very good. Any other members? Hearing none, Mr. Evans, I believe, prepared to vote. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Courtney? Yes. Mr. Eisenbacher? Yes. Mr. Krent? Yes. Mr. Lambert? Yes. Mr. Bloomingdale? Yes. Okay, that is approved. The next item is the approval of agenda. Are there any questions or concerns related to the printed agenda presented to us? Hearing none, this will be our agenda for our business meeting here tonight. <coughs> item 4A, uh, hearing of a case regarding a variance request from uh, 4205 Crooks Road um, a person by the name of Ar Lolly, is that pr pronounced? Okay, very good. And uh, Mr. Evans, if you could please present the facts of the case to the board. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As indicated in tonight's agenda, this uh, matter is for property at 4205 Crooks. As printed in the agenda, the request is in order to split a parcel into two parcels, a .05 foot variance to the requirement that newly created parcels measure at least 100 feet in width. One of the parcels is proposed to measure 99.99 .99 feet in width. I do have a brief presentation, if I could direct everyone's attention to the overheads uh, behind and the left and right of the board. Uh, the subject property is located north of West Waddles Road uh, on the west side of Crooks, and the overhead is the one outlined in red. Now I've zoomed in on that same aerial to give everyone an idea of the uh, configuration of the parcel and also the surrounding parcels. And what I've done with the next slide is overlaid the zoning in yellow. The subject property and all surrounding property is zoned single family residential, the same residential classification. Now specific to this request, uh, the applicant seeks to uh, split this parcel into two, parcel A and parcel B. The city zoning ordinance requires that the parcel width at the setback line be at least 100 feet. One of the parcels can meet that. The other one, parcel B to the south, uh, at the setback line, which is a, a line parallel to the front property line, a distance of 40 feet back from the front property line, that width is going to be 99.95 feet wide. So in order to uh, get this property split, they need a .05 foot variance. Uh, the board's packet does include an email from the city assessor also giving some understanding as to the requirements for this as ultimately the city assessor is the one charged with signing off on lot splits. I'll turn it back over to the board for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Are there any questions from board members for the city administration? Mr. Lambert. Yes. Uh, Mr. Evans, and this is, I guess, a question also for the chairman. Since we only have uh, uh, not a complete board here tonight, should we be offering the petitioner the opportunity to postpone action on this if they have any concerns about whether there's enough votes here to approve this variance? I'll just briefly address that, and then, of course, the bright mind at the end of the table here might have a different perspective. But uh, normally, at this point in time, we you know, until the petitioner comes forward, at this, after this, uh, this um, information from the city administration, then they, they oftentimes will be introduced or introduce themselves, oftentimes presenting the facts of their side or of the, um, of the application, and then, you know, it's, it's made at that point in time. But I guess since we're talking about it, it might as well cover it now. So since we are not a full board, uh, and there's uh, an alternate is not available to, um, fill in for one of our absent board members. The petitioner has a, a, the right to request a delayed action to a f another meeting when there might be a full board. That's not a guarantee that there'll be a full, full board at the next meeting because these things do happen. But also the, our board here has a right to move forward tonight regardless of how many people are sitting up here as long as we have quorum. So that's something for the petitioner to consider uh, here in the coming minutes or uh, tens of minutes. So, Mr. Evans, do you have anything further? Well, and if I could add, uh, you'll need, uh, the petitioner would need four yes votes for his variance to pass. Sure. 
and that's what makes it interesting for the petitioner to factor that in for four affirmative votes to pass any request. Mr. Dufresne? Just to add on addressing Mr. Lambert's question, if, if the question is related to timing, as long as you haven't started any deliberations or decision, the decision making process, as long as the applicant has the opportunity, um, has, knows and has the opportunity to decide what, for himself or herself whether or not to proceed. So just addressing your timing issue, as long as you haven't started deliberations or decision making process, we can go forward. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Courtney? Yes, I just want to make sure I understand this. If they had another two-thirds of an inch of property, they wouldn't need us, they would meet the requirements. Uh, if it is two-thirds of an inch, whatever the amount Actually, is, yes. Less. <laughs> but, uh, well, okay. that's correct, yes, it's a one five-hundredths of an inch. Yeah. Well, so that is an option for the a foot, I'm sorry. to uh, make that request to the board here tonight. Mr. Eisenbacher. Uh, looking at that map plan that you just had up, one slide ago, the yellow with the zoning. Uh, looking at the properties to the rear, it appears that both of those are less than 100 feet wide, given the, the width requirement. It appears that, except for the corner lots, that most of these lots are in the 100 foot, or 95 to 100 foot range. Is that accurate? Uh, I don't know. Okay. It, 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 I, I, I didn't. Check okay. the widths of all the other properties in the area. Okay, but visually looking at that map, it appears that the predominant layout is properties in the narrower than 100 foot, given the width of those red lines. From the GIS data, it looks like they are less than 100. Certainly, I have the ability to pull up a current GIS map with measurements if the board would like to to see that. You could, that'd be. Just so everybody knows, I, I okay. can do that if needed. So why don't we, while you're doing that, we could ask the petitioner to come forward if there are no other questions of the city administration at this time. Seeing none, uh, will the petitioner come forward to the podium, please? And please identify yourself and your relationship to the property or to the property owner. Yeah, my name is uh, George Reichert. I'm the surveyor. Um, that's uh, Mr. Ariela's wife. He was in an accident last night, and he we had surgery this morning. So that's why I'm here. Okay. <laughs> so. Would you like to, hearing what you had heard us discuss just minutes ago, would you like the board to proceed? Yes. Okay, thank you. So okay. please state your information you want to share with us. Yes. On this particular parcel, uh, the platted dimensions um, on, on when it was originally platted was a little bit wider than what the actual measurement is now, um, just based on where the monumentation is as far as the lot width of the parcel. If the platted parcel was exactly like the plat shows, it would have met the 100 foot requirement. But since it's a couple inches short of an overall dimension, it ends up being just short at the setback line. So really that's the hardship of this lot is it's not like it's supposed to be. It's a little bit short in this particular case. Okay. Uh, any questions of the petitioner's yes. representative, Mr. Eisenbacher? So basically what you're saying is, is that the monument is slightly off from where it is supposed to be? Yes. Okay. The monument? Yeah, the, 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 the lot markers oh, are the steel. Instead of being 100 foot, they're, uh, you know, 99 point something instead of 100 feet. So over, overall dimension is a little bit short. Okay, so basically the title and the layout of the land was for a 200 foot piece of property. When you went out and measured it, they were half inch off. Correct. In, in this particular case, this, this particular parcel starts at just under 200 feet at the front in the actual road when it was originally platted and then gets wider in the back as it goes back. So they took the 27 feet for the road. Mm -hmm. So our parcel is supposed to be 199.93 record dimension at this new setback line of 60 feet, but it's actually 199.66. So it's actually almost three inches short of what it was record. Okay, so I was just an error using old measurement processes. Um, 
or that's just where it was staked over time and what we try not to do is re disrupt everything if that's where all the points are found within an inch or two we try to keep lot lines harmony okay. anyone else for this gentleman mr courtney no, this this is your survey isn't it correct yeah it shows off 100 and over 101 feet at the back yeah that's correct. On the, uh, or over 201 feet if you took. Correct, at the, at the, at the, current the lot. Yeah, at the current dimension in the back, yes. Okay, thank you. No notes. Okay, you thank can you. have a seat, thank you. So at this time, we are going to open the public hearing for the general public to make a commentary to the board before we consider anything. So I'll open the public hearing, ask anyone who would like to address the board to come forward and please state your name and your relationship, if any, to the, to the address in question, to the parcel in question. I think we have a customer. Good evening. Apparently I drew the short stick. <laughs> um, we are the family from- Identify yourself. Stacy Gazinski from 1043 Fountain Drive. Okay. Is that right there? It's right above okay. the property. <coughs> Welcome. Um, we sent you an email uh, before three o'clock today. We yeah. Received it. Yeah. Um, we have it. Yeah. We currently we just moved into this property in December, so we were kind of surprised when we saw this come through. Um, and it's really going to kind of impact generally uh, the privacy at our lot. We feel like it already has with some of the trees that have been removed. So. Um, we were hoping that we could um, work it out so that we could maintain our privacy. And then in seeing the map with the survey, it's it's way worse than I thought initially because um, if we could put that slide up, the um, where the garage is, is, this, is a nice distance away. But the way that it's plotted out, I'm gonna have a house on top of my back fence for sure. So. Um, so we're lot 59, basically. And I'm sure that these houses are gonna be, as you pointed out, that the lot sizes are around 195 to 100 feet on our area, but our houses, I'm sure, um, are not gonna, is not as large as what they're gonna put on there. So um, I guess we have some concerns about proximity to the neighbors and what you bought. Okay. Okay. Um, any comment or questions for this lady? Just Mr. One, Lambert. Yes. Ms. Gazinski, I'm going to ask the, the city planner in a moment here, or the zoning specialist, a question about the setbacks. But uh, I don't know if you are, may be aware or not that that home, wherever they put it, may be farther away from your property line or away from your home than the two homes on both sides of you. It, would that make things a little easier for you to deal with if we were to show that that home would be farther away than those two adjoining properties? Well, of course they would be because that's in the back. So I have my whole backyard. Mm -hmm. But looking at that setback, I mean, how far is that setback? I had. Yeah, well, that's what I'm going to ask him in a few minutes. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it's going to be pretty close to the back of our property for sure. So, I mean, if we're able to, um, you know, put in a better fence that's up there and maybe some landscaping in there to give them privacy and us privacy, then we could, we could probably be okay with it. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Bloomingdale. <clears throat> uh, Ma'am, you sent us a letter, correct? Yes. Yep. In that you had, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I wonder if I could uh, ask the lady if it would be okay to read the requirements for the benefit of the uh, petitioner. Sure. Uh, the first first request is that a, a position of the new structure uh, not be directly behind our house. A second position of new structure will have a predetermined distance from our property line. We would be okay if the new structure was in a similar position to the detached garage currently on the property. And third, a new vinyl a privacy fence be erected to replace the current fence uh, and appropriate greenery, greenery uh, be landscaped to protect our privacy and block sound. Is that a correct reading of yeah. it? Okay. 
yet. So then in, in response to that, the, the garage, as you can see, is pretty far over. So I'm sure that the house would not be able to be that far away from our property, for sure. Okay. Mr. Courtney has something. Yes. You realize uh, you've got a lot of property there. You can do what you want with the back end of it and create your own privacy. For sure. Yep. Okay. I just, it isn't necessarily the guy that's building that has to provide you with privacy. Both of you can do that. Well, I understand that, but I'm also now going to have to deal with the construction and other things yeah. as well, the dust and... I've gone through right. that, so I know what right. that is. Yeah. Noise, I... Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank okay. you. You can have a seat. Thank you very much. Anyone else under public comment during this public hearing? See none, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. I'm going to ask the Vice Chairman, Mr. Bloomingdale, to give us an overview of the communications we received uh, via the public by um, letter or email. Well, we have a second letter uh, that's opposed, opposed um, and I believe the name is Ann Selinsky. And her address is written as uh, 4215 Carson Drive. Okay, so there will be two communications, the email referenced by the lady who just spoke, and then the uh, letter, handwritten letter that Mr. Bloomingdale just referenced. And I know all board members have received those. So we'll bring it back to, to the board for consideration. Is there any discussion or a motion or inquiry of the city administration? Mr. Lambert. Yes, Mr. Evans, what, if the lot split is approved, what would be the setback that's required for that home on the north end of the property as far as the distance from the uh, property line? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Lambert. The, uh, that would be considered a side yard setback. They could uh, go as close as 10 feet to uh, that property line with a brand new house. Uh, they would have to have at least 15 feet on the other property line. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else like to have a question, comment? Yes, Mr. Eisenbecker. Um Curious if you've had a chance to look up what the width of the surrounding properties are. Well, I, I can show the board the map okay. and we can go through it together, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's the subject property. Now I can't see these numbers from where I'm sitting. So what I can do, if it's okay with the board, is maybe go counterclockwise. We can take a look at the, the lot widths for the properties along Fountain. And these are the lot widths along the street lines, not along the setback lines, but it, I think it gives everybody a general idea of the configuration. Can everybody see that reasonably well? Absolutely. Let me know if you can. I can zoom in. 90, 90, 67. 82. Yeah. It, it, appears, it appears that Stacy Gazinski's lot is 90 feet wide. Okay. Yes. This is an R1B, this, right. whole, this whole area. And yeah. Mr. Crandor are 100 to the lower right. With a bump out. There must have been some lot averaging to, to allow that to happen. You know, it, I didn't check before I came in, but it's possible. I really don't know. I just didn't check. Yeah. Okay. The green space was the allowance. Okay. 
It, 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 yeah. it could be, but I, I certainly can't say for certain because I wasn't prepared for the question. It appears that way. Thank you. Okay. So at this point in time, Mr. Courtney, you'd like to speak. Go yeah, ahead, I have please. A question for Mr. Evans. This, this proposed new house is setting back from Crook <coughs> 130 feet. Oh, is that on the uh, site plan? That's on. Or the uh, proposed uh, split survey. Plot plan. Shows 130 feet setback, is that? Well, I, if you're asking me to read what the plan says. <laughs> no, is that, is that a permitted distance? Yes. It is? Okay. Yes. It just seemed a little excessive to me. That's why I... Okay. Okay. Thank you. So um, it's on the table for the board to consider. Is there anyone who would like to make a motion at this time? Uh, I'll let you do it. I'll, I'll make the motion to approve based on... Uh, based on it meeting the criteria. Uh, let me get to the criteria page. Uh, based on meeting the criteria A, the except exceptional characteristics of the property is the fact that it was improperly laid, laid out at its origination and placement of the monuments and does not match the original survey width and B, it is obviously for this premises. C, it is not a personal item. It's something that existed well in the past during the original monument placement. D, characteristic that makes the compliance with dimensional requirements difficult must not have been created by a current or previous owner. It was not created by the owners. It would be created by the surveyor that placed the monuments and E, is definitely not harmful to the essential character of the area which the property is located. As we just saw in the display, most of the properties in the area are not meeting the 100 foot width and a half inch variance is extremely minimal. I'll second. There's a motion and a second and I just have a question for the makers of the motion. Um, the email received <coughs> which the lady addressed to the board uh, you know, she's asking for screening of several kinds. Is that um, part of your, would that be part of your motion or amended motion or friendly amendment um, to address that? Or is the motion as is as stated? My motion is as stated. I believe that fencing is outside of our purview as a BZA. That would fall under the other zoning requirements. Um, unfortunately, when she purchased the property, um, it didn't include the property to her rear. Um, and I'm sorry to be that blunt, but another person owned that property and except for a half inch variance due to an error many years ago, they're in compliance with our zoning ordinance. Okay. Mr. Evans, do you want to address the, um, fencing? item that Mr. Eisenbacher just spoke about? Is there a question? <laughs> well, I believe it's outside of our purview as BZA. If the board, the board can impose conditions if they believe it's reasonably related to the item in question. So I, I, I don't know, that, so that's, Really, that's my response. It's up to the board if they want to impose any conditions, but the board would also have to have a level that the conditions they do impose are reasonably related to the variance that's being granted. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lambert. Yep. Could we, as one of the conditions, would it be reasonable to stipulate an increase in the side yard setback in addition to the mandatory 10 feet. If you could demonstrate it's reasonably related to the grant. Um, and on that and note, that would be that would be a board discussion. 
Okay, and on that note, would it be, would that then, as the one lady uh, addressed us, would that put the the, how, the new house in line with the garage that she was speaking about? I don't, so you're asking if the, I'm not sure what your question that, is. Th does the lady's um, expressed interest in that comport with what Mr. Lambert was just addressing? I don't, Mr. Think, I don't think I follow okay, your, what's being said here. Mr. Lambert's uh, question, or if, if that was part of this um, requirement by this board, would Mr. Mr. Lambert just address as far as the setback, would that uh, achieve what the lady is interested in? An additional side yard setback? Yeah. No. Would it achieve what she's interested in? That's, I, I can't, okay. I don't know. Mr. Lambert, do you have anything else on that? No, okay, Mr. Bloomingdale. Just to take the last comment into consideration, uh, basically that request would move the house approximately 50, 60 feet more towards the road, to put it uh, approximately where the garage is at. I see. And it, it, and to add a little bit, it would increase the backyard, obviously, and uh, and uh, shorten the front yard. Any other discussion items, Mr. Lambert? Do you want? Are you interested in making a friendly yeah, amendment, I, or an amendment, I should say? I'd like to, but I'm just trying to get a grab a hold of a reason for a specific amount. I mean, I don't think we can throw an arbitrary amount and say, oh, 15 feet instead of 10 feet. I mean, there were trying to look at the property right now and determine if there's some feature on there that makes a re where you could have a reason for such a setback. It's based on, or, sure. Mr. Eisenbacher. I mean, based on what was stated about it being reasonable and related, I believe we could go add that half inch to the 10 foot setback. I mean, so it'd be 10 feet and a half inch. I mean, I mean, we're talking about a half inch. It's, it's, right. this is the smallest variance I can imagine because it's less than the width of the survey stick. I mean, everything else is just following our zoning ordinance. Right. I, I agree with what Mr. Eisenbacher said, you know, at the most we would consider a half inch, but you know, mortar slop on a brick could be a half an inch. I, I think it's, I would just leave it as, uh, as, as the resolution is stated right now, and I, my, I, my second stands as is, I wouldn't change a thing. Okay. Mr. I, uh, Mr. Lambert, did you have something further? No. no. And Mr. No. Courtney. You know, I'm opposed to lot splits, but when you get down this small, I don't, <laughs> I don't see how I can be opposed to it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mr. Bloomingdale, did you have any, anything? I know, sir. I don't, one, yeah, one Mr. Craig. One last comment. The, the setbacks for the R1B, um, right now, let me just get to the page for a second. The front yard setback has to be 40. This is for lots with sewer. I take it this is a, has a sewer on it. Yeah. Um, the front yard setback is, is a, the, the, the minimum it can be is 40 feet. The minimum for one side of the, uh, the two side yards is 10 foot and the other uh, and, and the other at least 25 foot, and the rear yard is 45 feet. I don't think the neighbor that, that objected to this has any ground to stand on because um, this is an R1B. These are the requirements in the ordinance. Any home built within those requirements for those setbacks that meet, meet those setbacks should be approved. I, I don't see a, an issue here at all. I, I think that half inch is, I'll get into discussion later when we get into comments, but as far as this resolution, I'd leave everything as it stands. The setbacks are, th this whatever home's placed on this um, has plenty of room to fit, fit within those setbacks. I don't see a, I mean, it'll be, I can see that they can build a home in compliance easily in this district w in, within this ordinance. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else? 
I believe then we, Mr. Evans, are prepared for a vote. Mr. Courtney. Yes. Mr. Eisenbacher. Yes. Mr. Crent. Yes. Mr. Lambert. Yes. Mr. Bloomingdale. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Congratulations, you have your variance. Now on to item five, uh, communications. Mr. Evans, do you have anything? Ms. Dufresne, do you have anything? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, actually I do have a communication. Um, Ms. Bloom, so, uh, the city attorney for the city of Troy, um, asked me to let you all know that in uh, maybe October, more likely November, she's going to be offering a training session, a refresher course for many of you on the uh, Open Meetings Act. Um, and that there's an, she'd like to extend an open invitation to all the members of this board um, to attend that at the Planning Commission. Um, so, I'm just, this, <laughs> just as a tease, if you will, um, Ms. Bloom asked me just to ask me to say just a few things at today's meeting. Um, this, I did not redo these slides, so some of you may have seen these slides already. But um, just briefly, the Open Meetings Act is um, obviously important, something important for us to follow. I think you're all familiar with it. Um, it's statutory, starts at MCL 15.263. Um, essentially, the Open Meetings Act requires that public have an opportunity, it's due process. Public has an opportunity to be heard and notice that a meeting is taking, pla taking place. Um, the definition of meeting is found in the act. It's the convening of a public body at which a quorum is present for the purpose of deliberating toward or rendering a decision on a public policy. And though the key words there are deliberating toward or rendering a decision. Um, you can have an informal canvas of the members of your board prior to a meeting and that's not a meeting um, unless, there, unless you disclose to the other members of your board um, what, the, what your informal canvas results are. Um, that would be a circum circumvention of, of the OMA. <clears throat> Next slide. Oh, you did it. Um, I know there was a question earlier or last week um, regarding email and whether or not um, replying to all in an email is considered a violation of the Open Meeting Act. There is not an easy answer to that question. Um, the rule of thumb that we like to follow in our office is that we'd prefer that you not reply to all to any emails that go out. Um, there is case law that suggests that um, an, an email between the members of a board could be considered a meeting, um, and it would be a violation because it's not open to the public, and the public didn't get didn't get notice of it. So, if you have, um, especially if there's any deliberation or um, you know discussion about where, what you're where you're leaning or what your decision would be, that's absolutely not going to be tolerated um, in a, in a reply to email. So, just be conscious of the fact when you get an email from from someone, I mean, city administration, just. Um, Try not to hit the reply to all. Um, same goes. I don't. We don't have, find ourselves having um, conference calls very often anymore. But if we if we were, um, same thing there. If we if we had a quorum of members on a, a conference call, that would also be considered a violation of the Open Meetings Act because the conference calls are not um, generally open to the public, and the public doesn't have notice of those. Um, and why does it matter? It, again, it matters because it's due process, and um, the city. We strive really hard to try to keep the city out of, out of court. Um, <clears throat> it's very important that all of these meetings are recorded. Um, obviously, they're they're archived, they're recorded. If anyone uh, wants to um, challenge the decisions that this board makes, um, all of those decisions are are kept in the archives. Um, <clears throat> We, you know, we make sure that you know our door is left open. Um, it's not to get a nice breeze in here. It's to make sure that if someone's walking by and they and they want to come in, they know that there's an, it's an open door policy and that everyone, anyone is welcome to come in. And if they're, I know at times during some of the more heated debate during council sessions, the doors get closed, um, but there always has to be a sign posted out there saying there's a meeting in session. You're welcome to come in quietly. Um, I know there there are occasions uh, where we have overflow rooms downstairs in the employee lounge and in other places throughout the building. So we strive really hard to make sure that we violate <coughs> the Open Open Meetings Act. So that's just a few things. I know you all know all of that, but Lori is going to, hopefully she's going to update these slides. And um, again, you're all welcome. I'll make sure I tell you what date, what which planning commission meeting that training session is going to be, probably November, maybe October. It's okay? Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions, anything? Okay. Mr. Evans, anything else? Well, I'd just say overall that my experience with this board in the last few, well, since I've been 
uh, working with this board since 2010, we've all done a wonderful job. Um, and the rule of thumb I always go by is um, don't do anything where there could be an appearance of doing something wrong. I don't think anyone of this board is, or any of our boards that I'm aware of has done anything wrong, but sometimes just the mere appearance or question. Um, so everyone on this board has done a great job, and that's the rule of thumb I go by. Very good. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Craig. I uh, just wanted to uh, another miscellaneous business. You know, the city of Troy is almost 60 years old. I cannot, I, it's hard for me to believe that another item that we just heard, something similar to that, hasn't come before the city before. In other words, when you're talking less than an inch as far as requiring a variance, I, I will take this, I'll add it to my list, if it's all right with this board, <laughs> to the suggestions to changing our ordinance to come up with some kind of more reasonable <laughs> dimension as what is allowed and what isn't allowed within within uh, when we do lot splits i mean it's it's this guy this person spent 150 dollars for that half an inch you know, <laughs> would, i'd like to res make make that go but go away so that people coming in with you know an inch or less don't have to see us it could be an administrative decision anyway that's my comment Mr. Eisenbacher. Along those well, first of all, let me just, if you have a communication, then we'll I'll call upon you. If not, we'll close communications out and move on to miscellaneous business. That That's okay. So uh, it's all about keeping the ball yep. down the court. So yep. Mr. Eisenbacher. Okay, it's not, okay, so now we're in. <laughs> miscellaneous business. Miscellaneous yes. business, okay. Along the lines of Mr. Krent's um, idea of bringing this to the board, it seems like this is a, a tolerance item. Like every, all of our dimensions that we have in the zoning ordinance are a fixed number with no tolerance whatsoever. And it seems like a plus or minus three inches or a plus or minus whatever could be applied to them to resolve as an issue. Um, just because of historical, like this, like the surveyor brought to us, there's historical errors in how properties are laid out. Thank and you. I think that also did come to us when the house was situated a little bit off. And I don't know, I don't mm -hmm. remember how much that was, if it was six inches or four inches, mm -hmm. but it was a few inches also that time. So I don't, and at, in my work as an engineer, when we measure parts, there's an increasing tolerance as the part gets bigger. Mm -hmm. So that might be yes, a better solution yes, also. Yes. Like if you have an extremely small part, a small dimension, the tolerance is smaller than if you have a, a big dimension. So over 100 feet, we might have a 1% or half percent error or whatever. I appreciate that. That's good good input. Good I'll bring that, that, those kind of comments to the, the Planning Commission. My comment on that is um, not to be contrarian here, but I'm going to be for a second. Mm -hmm. And that is, you know, what the city administration does on a daily basis, it's hard and fast for not just um, city employees as far as looking at property, but the surrounding owners of a home or prospective owners when they're looking at a home or a parcel, they know exactly what is called upon. And when the errors do happen, think that there has to be, be action taken. But we have not, I've been on this board for a long time, we have not been inundated with errors in this regard. Yeah, you know, I could see that if this was an issue where there were so many uh, survey companies out there making so many errors and, you know, maybe the public said, you know, a half inch is okay. But, you know, if a half inch is okay, what about three quarters of an inch? And that's only a quarter away from, you know, so where does it end? So, I mean, I'm kind of like a, in the sense of black and white person, the city has a record of, you know, hard and fast numbers on file when Mr. Evans deals with a developer or homeowner or prospective owner, uh, you know, they can ask a quick question and he can give a definitive answer right away versus, well, you know, that's not the case right now. So that's why I think this board kicks in. We represent the citizens of Troy and we can actually say, sure, half inch, quarter inch is not, a, is not an issue. So that's my thought and, uh, you know, I kind of like the fact that there isn't really any um, ability for someone to wiggle around the or, uh, the, the uh, ordinance and the, the districts that are planned out, uh, which is uh, through the Planning Commission and to City Council. 
I think that's the proper process, but you know, maybe I'm wrong. So Mr. Bloomingdale, you have something? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm like you, uh, black and white, you know. But the practicality of it is that even the temperature can affect, depending on what kind of equipment you're using, uh, the accuracy or dimension. Um, if a guy is really doing his work right, uh, he'll factor in weather uh, if he's using a steel tape, for example, because he knows it's going to be a little bit longer. So I uh, concur with the idea that we develop some kind of reasonable tolerance. And I like the, uh, the additional comment where it should be also uh, the, the size of the property taken into consideration because I think the comments already made. The longer the distance, um, the more potential for error. In fact, the tolerances are higher. So. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Chair? Yes. I don't want to. Does anyone else have something else to say? Well, I encourage Mr. Crent to bring comments to Planning Commission. The problem that we would run into is there, there has to be a black and white line somewhere. And when you start talking about reasonableness, then you venture off into arbitrary and capricious. So the, I, I encourage you to have the discussion, continue the discussion. But from the legal department's perspective, there always has to be some sort of black and white line. And for changing it for the sake of change, you know, I, I don't know if that if that will happen. But continue the discussion, absolutely. Thank you. A question on that? Yes. Is that the reason that this petitioner come in, spend $150 to get that half inch, because of that black and white uh, idea? Well, in, in essence, yes. I don't know okay. if you've had a chance to review um, Mr. Lacari from the assessing department. Um, his his email. It's the last page of our of our um, of our packet. But he kind of offered the explanation. Um, he's charged. He's charged with, um, you know, assessing this the property in the city. And if something is is off, someone's going to have a hard time getting insurance or getting a mortgage. Um, so it's it's a black it's a black line in our black and white line in our ordinance. It's a black and light black and white line with respect to assessing. So there's it has ripple effect as, as what I'm trying is what I'm trying to say. It's, page, it's a very last page. Um, it's a it's an email uh, August 13th I believe is the page 17 of 17. Is that right? Okay. I just missed that one. <laughs> well said. I think it'll be on the computer version as well. Yeah, here's here's a copy. If you. I think it, you know it's, very, it's advisable for the planning commission and the legal and city staff to continue dialoguing. I just can't imagine, as far as the insurance companies go, you know how can you insure a parcel? in a city where you don't know what you don't know and you won't know it until you don't you're told you know this is now determined you know so i I'm, i'd be interested in of course this isn't anything for the board to discuss or be concerned with but what uh, recourse these pro this property owner has to go back to the survey company to get to redress uh, obviously a faulty survey i don't know anything about surveys but you know, they, I know they have to have insurance for those things to uh, deal with things of like this well, nature. So the $150 fee that they had to pay to be before the door, board tonight, I think uh, they're perhaps entitled to something far greater than that for their challenge of having to jump through some hoops. But it's, it certainly is unusual to me. But once again, I'm just saying from personal experience, I've been here for a long time. This is the first time something like this is ever addressed. So it seems to me that it's that once in a lifetime um, situation that we saw tonight. And but you know, gave us an opportunity to get together in August. And what else would you have to do tonight if <laughs> you didn't have this one issue? So, Mr. Bloomingdale, yes. Uh, legal counsel, we have a black and white requirement. Uh, so my question is, then we also have the latitude in the course of a meeting like this one here uh, to take in a, a reasonable, um, we just did. Exactly. That's exactly what we, that's the purpose of this ZBA is to take a look at a set of facts and circumstances and say, okay, there's reasons, as Mr. Eisenbacher expertly pointed out in his motion, there, there are reasons to allow the 0.05 foot, foot variance. Gotcha. So yeah, that's exactly what the purpose of this board is. Super. <clears throat> Thank you. But well, seeing that we can move on to um, the next agenda item, which I believe is public 
comments, so I'm going to ask the general public. If you'll have to come to the podium, sir, <laughs> and you'll have to state your name and give us a little piece of information about yourself, and then you have uh, the right to address the board. Joseph McCoff, live in the city of Troy. There was a, a I thought it was going to be on the agenda for today. This is a parcel of property. Uh, PUD, I believe it is, for 16 Mile and John R. area. Okay. I don't know if that was on the agenda today or? It's not on the agenda, but uh, you can contact the city staff tomorrow to get more information. Mr. Evans will be here afterwards. He's always very kind to uh, answer I heard, questions. I was out of town. He may have a quick that answer that for you. It sounds Evans. like something at the Planning Commission, though. I'm thinking it might be, and uh, I can get your contact information, definitely get back to you tomorrow or have the planning director uh, get back to you and let you know. Okay, thanks a lot. Sure. If you just want to wait until the meeting's over, I think we'll be done pretty soon. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Krent is the planning commissioner, sir. He may want to say something here. At our last meeting, we looked at that property. We did, it was, a, it was only an inf uh, informational meeting. It was not a decision meeting. Right. So we did review it. Uh, there were a lot of comments. Um, they're in the minutes, you want, if you'd like to go over them, uh, or I can talk to you after this meeting a little bit, to get you some info on that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Good question, just not the appropriate uh, body to, to be addressing it here tonight. So I don't see anyone else who would like to address the board, so we'll close out public comment, and that moves us right to adjournment. Thank you. Any, anything else, anyone? Hearing none, we will see everybody in September. Very good.